Hey people, so I've had a few days to have a play with the uh, T14S, so it's uh, so far impressions are pretty good. Just here to share some insights, hope that's okay, enjoy watching. The Lenovo ThinkPad T14S that we have here, especially the AMD model, is likely to be for the more refined customer with a focus on utility. They want their thin and light laptop to have as much power as possible and they don't mind if it costs a little bit extra for this premium aspect as long as they understand some constraints of the product. For them being utility focused, this constraints on non-upgradable RAM and fewer display options, lack of Thunderbolt, is going to be something that they may out before they buy. In the context of Lenovo's own offering, this year the X1 Carbon and X1 Yoga line did not get the AMD Ryzen processor. Effectively, that means the T14S is Lenovo's um, de facto back product. Between the T14S and the normal T14, it's going to be more affordable. Feature remains largely the same. The T14S is thinner and lighter marginally. For the customers who get the T14, they're likely to want that um, optionality of um, being able to one day get to 48 gig of RAM. And they're likely to appreciate the ability to take off the keyboard uh, easily to swap it, for instance, uh, for a new keyboard two years down the line. It's a bigger chassis, so likely that it's possible to dissipate the heat marginally better. The E14 Generation 2 will be something to look at if you're looking at the T14. It's not, apart from the processor, it's not really that different a chassis to the T490S, is it? Sorry, I'm just checking if Lenovo is here. Um, but um, I'm just kidding. So the min change is three new keys. Um, so notification button, take or reject calls. Um, that's possibly useful if you work from home or do a lot of conferencing. The new Wi-Fi, AX Wi-Fi, it's a little bit faster for receiving if you, you have a compatible hardware. Really compelling feature of the Ryzen 7 up to eight core processors. Go into that in a sec. To put it in a better context, the T14S is right in between the T14 and the lighter carbon in weight. So they reduce from 1.5 kilo, 1.3 and 1.1. Increment of 200 grams between each of these machines. Let's see if we can take a look on the other side. Uh, it's obvious the carbon is one that has most minimal footprint. The footprint difference between the T14 and 14S is really minimal in reality. Hey people, so T14 on the right and uh, T14S on the left. So it's um, a few things to note on the inside. non swappable keypad, whereas this keypad you can replace. The original keypad gets too easily worn. I'm not sure how much of it you can see, but this feels distinctively not rubberized. That feels more rubberized. So the T14 is a more familiar one. On the inside, it's a little bit lower than T14 but it's really um, not too different. Um, upwards firing speaker on the T14 and uh, downwards firing speaker on the T14S. The speaker generally is likely to be better on the T14. And I think same story on the chassis. You can see a different coloring, darker, whereas that is a lot more rubberized in the feel. This one is, it feels more slippery. And um, I'm not sure if the fingerprint to leave there more easily. To compare the height of the T14 versus the T14S, as you can see, it's a little bit visible from the front, but really it's not much difference. T14S will feel a little bit more metallic in the casing, less grippy. The case attracts, I think, fingerprint. T14 we have on the left. It's, um, yeah, it's, you can't open it with one hand. As you can see, the T14S is a thinner body and the base cover is a little bit easier to take off, whereas um, there's a few more vents on the T14. So this is, you know, it's it's a good compromise between the ultra thin and light and premium, a laptop that's not refreshed this year, and the regular T14, which I think for many of you will be the better value for money machine. So we've got a Carbon a 7 on top of the T14S. Carbon is a more minimalized the chassis, was on this side as well, and other aspects. So if we just open them up, um, yeah, you can see it's um, it's quite a big difference in the bezel size. But uh, I think let's not compare it too much with the Carbon because this is one laptop that Lenovo decided not to substantially update this year. If you take into account that the Exxon Carbon 8th Gen doesn't have um, the AMD option, 
So actually, this is as close as you can get to Ryzen whilst keeping that thin and light form factor. You must not drop it. Um, it feels not heavy, quite well built, and the footprint, if you compare it to the XPS 13, the 9300, you'll notice the bezel is a lot more conspicuous. But of course, being a business laptop, you have features, for instance, the webcam cover, quite hard to use, as we mentioned in the previous video. The, on the left-hand side, of course, there is a um, charging port and um, docking, etc. On the AMD version, what's conspicuous and missing is the T14S lacks the Thunderbolt 3. So um, you still have the HDMI and USB Type A and uh, another Type A on the other side um, and smart card slot. But of course, it's um, a little bit of a shame that there is no Thunderbolt 3. You can do all sorts of cool stuff with this, for instance, an external graphic card or 10 gig Ethernet adapter or a more uh, exotic docking station with more display alt. I think that's the main use case for Thunderbolt 3 over the regular USB-C. Put it into context, most of the laptops with Thunderbolt 3 um, aren't AMD and the standard is only open very recently. So hopefully in the next generation, we can see it. You do not have the Dolby Vision 500 nits option. That's Intel exclusive for now, which is a little bit of shame because this laptop, you know, is super powerful for multitasking and heavier workload. You would think for editing, this is actually the better unit. We've got a 400 nits low power option, which I would argue is actually more practical for most people because, you know, it doesn't have as much reflection when you look at it from the side or outside. At the same time, at 400 nits, it's quite bright. Obviously, the standard 250 nits matte option. It's okay if you are indoor and it's not going to need that much brightness. And of course, there's a 300 nits option that's a touchscreen, but the touchscreen version will be a soft touch. Over, let's say, three years, you use a laptop, you press it a little bit harder than you should, and end up with a bright mark. A soft touchscreen without glass protection is quite a precarious design. There is the 500 nits previous option, but viewing angle on that varies. Most people don't go for that unless they absolutely have to. You know, the Dolby Vision screen will probably be the same as the one on the X1 Carbon, if you get the Intel version. And that screen, 10 bit, is just absolutely stunning. And what we've also noticed is between the different power mode, because all of a sudden you have more multitasking performance, it's quite interesting to see how it has um, modulated these performance levels. So even at the better battery setting, which is running the processor at 1.4 GHz, it's faster than the Intel's fastest mode. Alternatively, a different way to think of it, in the Cinebench, we can run a thread on firmware and still get faster score. From a performance perspective, it's definitely a massive boost that you probably haven't seen since the Sandy Bridge days. It's not to say that this laptop is completely cool and quiet, but compared to the Intel version, it's just eerie. When we run a game, look at the temperature there, it almost reaches 50 degrees. So it's capable of putting a lot more heat out there. When we run the Geekbench between the different energy mode, between battery versus plug-in, there were definitely some performance degradation on the battery mode, so it's not equivalent. But um, as far as the Cinebench is concerned, the score seems to be um, comparable between AC and battery, which is quite impressive. This is a T490, so it's not like for like comparison, it's also whiskey lake. This is just to give you a proxy performance of the previous generation. This is in between running benchmarks. When I put my hands here, it was quite cool. I can feel the warmth there, quite noticeable among more. This is related again back to the average temperature. If you want to use this laptop when it's actually on your lab, then that's going to be a more pleasant one to use. To cap performance, for instance, at specific performance levels, then if you cap the performance, then you can still attain loads of the performance and then still have the battery. So if you're more likely to use this laptop for heavier workloads, then the early estimate might suggest AMD gives you better battery life. But if you're lighter usage, then I suspect both laptops will be very similar. So how does the performance actually stack? Well, there's two different perspectives. The first one applies to most people. The second one is our frank opinion. We'll mention this later. So first perspective, single performance up, multi-threaded performance up quite a bit. It's almost P53 workstation-like. The graphic performance seems to be looking at benchmarks comparable to Intel plus NVIDIA on the Intel model. So, I mean, that's great. It saves you some money. I mean, so far, it's all good. Power, you know, usage seems to be better, more efficient, and overall thermos is, wow, improved. Um, so, you know, it's looking at this sort of scale of improvement. It's almost um, twice in some workload 
is astonishing. I think we haven't seen anything like this since the Sandy Bridge days. So I think if you're coming from the perspective of which one, and you're looking at it from performance alone, and you can overlook Thunderbolt 3, then I mean, the AMD is a no-brainer. I mean, even the Ryzen 5 is going to be somewhat um, competitive. I mean, very competitive versus what you had before with the T490S. So here's our perspective. If you look at other AMD laptops, you'll realize the resume implementation in this one is not perfect. What we mean by this is that the laptop seems to be aggressively power managed down to 19 watts in the power supplies. So if you were to buy an idea pad out there for maybe a third or a half of the price of a T14S, you can actually get 33% more performance in some scenarios typically the multi-threaded workload if you enable the higher TDP option. The T14S does not have a higher TDP option, so you're essentially capped at what Lenovo gives you. Even with the same processor, the performance of a laptop may vary substantially depending on a few factors. For instance, um, the power the manufacturer chooses to give the laptop, um, how much heat the laptop can effectively dissipate, so that's the fan, cooling, etc. And um, the thermal management, it's um, how it manages the throttling, etc., and some other factors. So if we focus on the TDP issue, that within five seconds of running heavy, heavy workload, the TDP gets capped from 25 down to 19 watts. It's, it's quite low. Whereas on the Intel version, you can have 25 watts for longer. So it's, um, it seems to be a discrepancy. Obviously, we can't speak to the inner workings of Lenovo. It's challenging enough, as you can imagine, to manage one product with two different processors. Whether they looked at it and said, oh, 25 watts, no, that's too much performance at 20? No, still too much performance. 19? Yeah, okay. Just to make Intel look more comparable, then that's a different conversation. If you're a consumer, you want to buy something and you want to get roughly the performance you expect. So when people, let's say, look at Ryzen 4800 consumer version, they expect that level of performance. They don't expect like 20, 30% less. It's the same story for the P53, P73, if you remember. They, on their marketing material, Lenovo never quite advertised that it was a max Q card with limited TDP. So in reality, the performance you get is lower than what it should be. So it's, it's, it's not new, but it's just you wish Lenovo would do better here and in the future BIOS update, Give you the option to run her TDP on this laptop. I mean, if Intel model can, then it's not really a topic of no, I can't get display the heat because the Intel runs. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it's far from perfect, but you know, if we walk back from this perspective and look at the gradual improvement over the uh, Intel only product, you know, it's it's there. Great, so we're uh, downloading Call of Duty. Render resolution at the moment, it's um, just below 720p. Speaking, it's about um, 30 frames per second. Sometimes it gets to 40, but when it's more complex, scene, it drops down to just over 20, so it's barely playable, but this is, um, you know, it's a latest game, and this is not a gaming laptop. As you can see, even in the Call of Duty, it's, uh, the CPU doesn't drain too much power, which is impressive because it's um, quite a demanding one. And the CPU, in some instances, have gone to 90, but not this time. So it's, um, this processor is more efficient. It's also able to go to higher temperature when you're genuinely stressing it. So center of the laptop, if you see where the laser is, that's where it gets quite hot. So, and the edge gets really hot. Where the laser is pointed at, we see that sometimes going to as high as 50 degrees C, so that's quite high. The front is actually cool. Um, the rear edge gets um, hot. But it's really this side of the vent, especially this metal bit, you don't want to touch. Oh, the table is hot. Okay. It's running the game. So, you know, 37. It gets quite hot near the back um, of the laptop and near the fan exhaust side. Uncomfortable if we point it at near the fan exhaust. Still really early days in terms of what you can get with Ryzen on business laptops. This is among the first 
of the really promising ones we've seen. You see that the P-series and also the Z-Book and the dual precision line, they've not been refreshed. So those are the 45 watts chips and um, power laptops, generally speaking. What presumably will happen is when AMD is ready and when those manufacturers are ready, they'll release something workstation line equivalent. So this 15 watts AMD Ryzen is not meant to replace your workstation laptops. It's only meant to replace what's in the T495, T495S, those 15 watts chips. But they're super powerful, so it's um, it's easy to see how they can disrupt the market. I can only imagine that um, workstation line with Ryzen 8 core, I mean, that would be something to look forward to. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. It's um, If you can give us a subscribe, um, this is um, our first attempt to edit with Adobe um, Premiere, so it's um, the audio is all over the place, so we're hoping to fix that in a future video. We probably can't fix it this um, this time, but thank you for watching. Thanks.